An investigation continues after a family was found dead on the north side. How neighbors are reacting this news. A local brewing company getting worldwide attention. We're going to take a look at their efforts to support social issues. Still ahead. And no tropical rains for us, just big time heat next week. We've got the latest on that forecast coming up. Live from KZ12, the news at noon starts right now. Police are saying the deaths of a family in Stone Oak were not accidental. They are convinced that this was a suicide, at least for one of the family members. Officers found the bodies of two adults and four children inside a vehicle in a garage on Red Willow near Wilderness Oak. As Katrina Weber reports, a day of confusion for neighbors now has become one of sadness. It was a sight they couldn't miss. Still, the first time many people in this gated neighborhood noticed this crime scene yesterday morning was after a cell phone alert warning them of danger. That confused everybody. We all thought, well, what's going on? Police weren't sure at first either. Officers checking on a family on Red Willow found a note on their door then found reason to believe there were explosives. After an all day evacuation, police gave neighbors the all clear. Then they gave the news that all was not well for the family, a couple and four children from 11 months to four years old. Six dead um, in the back of the vehicle uh, appears to be a carbon monoxide poisoning. Police have no doubt that for at least one of them, this was a suicide. Neighbors can't make sense of it. We were stunned. When we heard about that, it was crazy. Yeah. Can't imagine what would have caused them to do that. It was just beyond, I can't even tell you, there's just not a word. The sense of confusion that people here felt yesterday has given way to feelings of shock and disbelief. Some are looking for ways to help everyone here deal with it. We are going to uh, get a candle ritual going. We're trying to figure out what is the best time and date. Like most people here, Rose Coben didn't know the family. They had just moved here in January. Police also are trying to learn more, including why this happened. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We're still waiting to learn more about the victim in a deadly crash on the northwest side. The officers first received a call around 3.30 this morning for a wrong-way driver on I-10 west of De Zavala Road. Police tell us that driver eventually hit a center concrete median and then continued to drive into a, divided, a divider in a construction zone near Lock and Terra Parkway just outside of Loop 1604. The SUV flipped over and then caught on fire. Officers say the driver was thrown from the SUV and pronounced dead at the scene. The victim's name has yet to be released. New details in a murder investigation this noon. We now know the name of the woman who was killed late Wednesday night on the north side. Police identifying her as 39-year-old April LeClaire. Officers responded to the 3800 block of West Avenue on Wednesday. When they got there, officers say this man was inside and would not open the door to the apartment, but kept on requesting medical help. When 43-year-old Thomas Roberts finally opened the door, the officers found the body of the woman on the floor with several injuries to her arms and hands. Roberts is now facing murder charges. A man in his 60s remains in serious condition after police say that he was stabbed by his 22-year-old daughter overnight. It happened just before midnight in the 8700 block of Wesley Manor Drive on the northwest side. According to police, the woman was off of her medication when the incident happened. The man taken to University Hospital. He's in serious condition. The victim's daughter was detained for a mental evaluation. A woman facing charges after she allegedly stabbed a man multiple times in his chest, arm, and leg. It happened just before midnight last night in the 400 block of Ward Avenue. That's just off of I-37 on the southeast side. According to police, 35-year-old Maria Aguilas was arguing with the victim. The situation escalated and she pulled out a knife and then stabbed him. The victim was taken to the hospital and is now in stable condition. Aguilas is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Turning now to unrest across America in Minneapolis as events honoring George Floyd continue. There are more protests calling for justice and racial equality and an end to police brutality. Meanwhile, as ABC's Alex Prichet says, there's new information about the investigation into Floyd's death. Minneapolis in mourning. 
Officers took a knee as the hearse carrying George Floyd's body arrived at his memorial service Thursday. His brother Philonez remembering their humble upbringing. We did a lot of things together from like talking with my mom, dancing with my mom, cooking with our mom. A heartfelt, powerful service for the man whose death started a movement. In New York City, more than 5,000 people marching across the Brooklyn Bridge with another of Floyd's brothers. The justice that so many people in this community seek beginning to play out in the courts. Three of the four former Minneapolis police officers involved in Floyd's death were in court. Toe Tao, Alexander King, and Thomas Lane, each facing felony charges of aiding and abetting second-degree murder. Derek Chauvin, whose knee was on Floyd's neck, charged with second-degree murder, expected in court Monday. Attorneys for King and Lane, who were both rookies, shifting blame to Chauvin. King's lawyer saying it was only his third shift as a full-time officer and that he told officers, you shouldn't do this. Lane's lawyer saying it was his fourth day on the job, saying he asked Chauvin twice, should we roll him over? Maurice Lester Hall was Floyd's friend and witnessed those last moments. I'm begging for his life. Him actually being scared and feeling the reaper. That's what's gonna stick with me. And overnight, most protests across the country were largely peaceful, but some clashes still breaking out, putting police under further scrutiny. In Buffalo, two officers under investigation after this video surfaced, showing them shoving a 75-year-old protester to the ground. The officers walked past. One appeared to radio for help. Police initially claimed the man tripped and fell. The man suffered a serious head injury and is now hospitalized. And then this video in New York City of a food delivery courier, an essential worker arrested while just doing his job. New York City's mayor condemned that arrest, saying that it's not acceptable and that it must stop. New York's governor calling that incident with a 75-year-old in Buffalo utterly disgraceful. Alex Perche, ABC News, Minneapolis. Meanwhile, back here at home, protests continue for a sixth day yesterday, and another protest is expected to take place today. A crowd marched over to the Bear County Courthouse, Mayor Ron Nuremberg asking for patience while he and other community leaders work to provide some answers. He says he does plan to establish a committee that will address people's concerns over racial inequality. The mayor directly addressing the protesters for the first time yesterday. So hold me accountable, okay? Yeah. Nobody else. Sir, people will make mistakes. We all make mistakes. There are going to be people out there who will, who will be with you who will make mistakes. There are going to be people on my side who maybe who will wear a uniform that might make mistakes. But let's forgive that and hold me accountable for it. Because I'm the mayor of this. Nuremberg says he acknowledges that people are tired of talking, suggesting that action will be taken. He added he wants San Antonio to be the example of positive change in the country. You can watch the mayor's entire speech to protesters on KSAT.com. It's on the home page. Raise a glass for racial equality. San Antonio's own Weathered Souls Brewing Company launched a campaign this week that has caught the attention of breweries all over the world. Proceeds from the project will be donated to organizations that support a reform on police brutality. Alicia Barrera visited with the founder of Weathered Souls Brewery to find out what sparked this idea and the reaction from the community. Beer releases are frequent at Weathered Souls Brewing Company, but there has never been one as massive as the one being prepped today. So Black is Beautiful basically is a worldwide collaboration. At this point, it's gone worldwide. Marcus Baskerville is the founder and head brewer. His team is working on an imperial stout to raise awareness of the deaths of unarmed black Americans, such as Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, at the hands of police. It's crazy times and everybody deserves equality. Everybody deserves inclusion. Everybody deserves respect. And uh, that's pretty much all we're asking. Basically, I wanted to um, get the brewing community to uh, show a unison in support of people of color. As part of Black is Beautiful, he released the recipe of his imperial stout online. Black is beautiful, right? So stouts range from any color of deep dark brown to the blackest of black. So we basically wanted to just meld it together as far as the perfect style of beer to go ahead and do with um, the whole initiative. Breweries in San Antonio and beyond have already signed up for the campaign. We're around 285, but we also have a brewery in Brazil, Japan, um, 
Germany, Ireland, Rwanda. Although all beers will have the same label, each brewery will be able to put their own spin on the recipe. And all proceeds from Black is Beautiful will be donated to organizations in support of racial equality. Weathered Souls Imperial Stout is actually brewing right now and is set to launch on July 4th. And breweries can still sign up for the Black is Beautiful campaign. We have a link on ksat.com on how to do that. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Still come this half hour, Texas State basketball coach Denny Castro being accused of racist remarks by former players. Larry Ramirez has the details coming up in sports. A local family picking up the pieces after their home was destroyed in a fire. How a school district is helping them replace some of what they lost. The San Antonio Zoo is getting ready to welcome some more visitors this weekend. Beginning tomorrow, the zoo will increase its capacity from 25% to 50%. The zoo is suggesting purchasing tickets ahead of time online at sazoo.org. All indoor spaces except for Discovery House will be open for guests. And as a thank you to annual pass holders, they're going to be extending all annual passes purchased between March 2019 through March 2020 by three months. This extension will automatically be updated. A grandmother doing what she can to provide for nine grandkids after they lost their home in a fire. Now the family is getting some much needed help so those kids can get their schoolwork done. This morning, Southside ISD replaced the children's school issued technology. They got Chromebooks and Wi-Fi hotspots so they can stay on top of their virtual learning. The children also received new clothes, shoes and $200 in gift cards. It's something that uh, we want our families to know that that's what Southside ISD is about. We're a family and when someone's hurting, we're there to help. So with anybody else that might be in a situation uh, like that or, or ever uh, something like that horrific happens, they can count on Southside ISD to come through and help them out. The devices the students had were destroyed in a fire last Saturday. An overloaded circuit caused flames inside the family's home. Sylvia Rio says she's just glad she and the children were able to escape safely. However, in the rush to get out, she broke her toe. The new clothes and shoes, along with $200 in gift certificates, are made possible thanks to San Antonio Threads. The district is also working with a donor in hopes of possibly replacing the family's trailer. Taking a live look outside with live cam, kind of a ditto day. We got that same look in the sky. You know, your mom, you say, I don't like that look in your eye. Yeah. I don't like the look in the sky. The look in the sky. It, it's going to be the same really next few days. And the thing that will change will be the temperatures. We're expecting hotter numbers as we get into the weekend and next week. The aquifer now on its way down. It's at 672 even. And in your pollen count, mold has been steadily dropping. It's in a moderate category at 670. Grass is low. We'll talk about these hot temperatures and we've got the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal coming up. Welcome back. Let's go live outside for you. Show you that we've got a lot of sun out there. Partly cloudy skies to mostly sunny skies right now. As we look over San Antonio, 85, your current temperature. Dew point is at 68. That's a little bit of an improvement from where we were earlier this morning, but we still do have a heat index of 88 with southeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. Here's a look at the cloud cover. Not much of it, not enough anyway, to give us some shade today. 83 Seguin, 87 in New Braunfels, 86 down there in Pleasanton. Most everyone is dealing with mostly sunny skies. 91, that's the highest temperature we see on the map right now. That's out there in Del Rio. And the humidity tracker does show dew points are right up there around 70. That's a problem because uh, the heat index is going to get to the upper 90s in some cases this afternoon. And we're only going up from there because the humidity, for the most part, stays with us. Uh, heat index, this is what it feels like. 88 here in town, 92 in Pleasanton, 94 in Catula. So here's the setup. we got our big ridge high pressure. That, of course, is that summer heat high. It's off to our west. Around the edge of it, we've seen some thunderstorms. And those have sort of uh, shifted around, moved through the panhandle last night, but they didn't make it down here. And uh, I don't think we have any concern, at least uh, for now, of that happening. But there is one change in the forecast. If you're watching us at 9 o'clock this morning, a little bit of a change now, I think, uh, that we're going to add in here because we're seeing some thunderstorms or the potential for some thunderstorms up there across parts of the Midwest. And this little piece of energy is actually going to work all the way around the ridge. And some of our computer models now, this is 
5 o'clock tomorrow does show a few of these thunderstorms trying to work in from the north and east. It's possible. The last couple runs of these models have been showing that, so it's giving me a little more confidence here that we do need to add in some rain chances tomorrow night. It would be a small window, not too concerned about severe weather or anything like that, but certainly something to watch uh, tomorrow night. Probably won't make it to San Antonio, uh, but can't rule it out. Uh, meantime, in the tropics, so uh, we still got our tropical depression down here over Mexico. Uh, Cristobal is, is starting to move north now, back out over the open water. So there should be some restrengthening going on here. Winds are at 35 miles per hour, gusting to 45. Latest uh, track takes it up towards Louisiana by Sunday uh, evening. Winds at 60 miles per hour. Th thankfully, it won't have a whole lot of time to strengthen. But on the back side of it, we're going to be looking at some really hot temperatures. I think we could see some record temperatures Tuesday. You saw it there briefly with uh, triple digits widespread. And then even on Wednesday, even though we're going to have a, a weak frontal boundary move through, we're still going to have hot temperatures because the air is going to dry out. Uh, so get ready for some heat. That's the bottom line going forward. 93 degrees today. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then look for 95 tomorrow, 97 on Sunday. Notice we added in that 20% chance of rain Saturday night. Other than that, it's a dry forecast. 101 Monday, 104 on Tuesday, both of which we would tie records. Then a little bit cooler Wednesday into Thursday. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. That 104 does not look good. Mm -mm. You know, you could go inside like an air-conditioned arena and watch some NBA. Well, basketball. maybe that's, one that's, day. That might be an option. You know, you know, the problem with that, though, is that you might watch the team, but you may not see the coach on the bench. Yeah, He's Adam old. Silver, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, says they still have a lot of details to work out about sending all the teams into a bubble down in Orlando. One of the issues they still must work out, what do they do with older head coaches like Pop, who's now 71? Plus, in high school ball, O'Connor's Camille Fowler signed yesterday to play at the next level. Coming up. It's been nearly three months since the NBA shut down because of COVID-19, but after a lot of discussions, the league is gearing up to resume play. The NBA Board of Governors voted Thursday to approve a 22-team format to restart the 2019-20 season July 31st in Orlando, Florida at the Walt Disney World Resort. The Spurs have joined the party as one of those 22 teams. Greg Popovich and the Spurs have made the playoffs for 22 consecutive seasons. If they get there this year, make that 23 and a new NBA record for the longest streak ever. But the NBA is still concerned about how they should handle older coaches like Pop, who's 71 years old. The data is, is demonstrating that for the most part, there are exceptions that healthy young people are the least vulnerable. But there are also people involved in this league, particularly some of the coaches who are obviously older people. And we also know people at any age who have underlying conditions are more, are more vulnerable. So we're gonna have to work through protocols and it may be, for example, certain coaches may not be able to be the bench coach. They may have to retain social distancing protocols and maybe they can be in the front of a room, a locker room or, or a ballroom with a whiteboard and be, but when it comes to actual play, you know, we're not going to want them that close to players in, in order to protect them. So those are all issues we're continuing to work through. So you got in college ball, Texas State men's basketball coach Danny Kaspar is being accused of making racially insensitive remarks by two of his former players. Former Bobcats point guard Jalen Sheed tweeted his allegations last night, saying, with all this going on, let's talk about what I and other players dealt with playing basketball for Danny Kaspar at Texas State. Many asked why the starting point guard on a 25-win team, first place contender team, would transfer before his senior season. Well, then below that, she lists examples of racist remarks that he claims Kaspar said. Alex Peacock, Sheed's former teammate at Texas State, told ESPN that he witnessed every transgression that was mentioned by Sheed in his tweet. KSAT 12 reached out for comment, and Texas State Athletics Director Dr. Larry Tice said he finds these allegations deeply troubling, and the university has launched a formal investigation through the Office of Equal Opportunity and Title IX. Thursday was a special day for O'Connor basketball player Camille Millie Fowler, who signed her letter of intent to the University of Dallas. The signing took place in the parking lot of O'Connor High School with her family right there by her side. Millie made the varsity team starting her sophomore year. In June 2018, she tore her left ACL. Then in May of 2019, she tore her right ACL while playing basketball. She came back from both injuries and now will take her skills to the next level. Um, it means a lot, especially after two ACL tears. I didn't really think this day would come, 
and so having it here today with all my friends and family really means a lot to me. Very fun. resilient, so much adversity and just, you know, back to back, you know, you work so hard to come back from one knee injury and then boom, all the, you know, we tear the other ACL. And I think just the second time around, she just had so much determination that she was going to make herself so much better and she worked at that rehab a um, hundred times more than any other kid I've ever seen because she wanted to get back so bad. Congratulations cool. to Camille yeah. and yeah. her family, That's right? That's stick-to-itiveness. Yep, you got it. Determination. Paid off. Tear up two knees and still get a start. Hurt. Coming up in the next half hour, coronavirus cases. In some places, they continue to increase across the country, but experts are warning that pe these packed protests could exacerbate the pandemic. The grim prediction being made by the CDC. And if you've been impacted by the pandemic and need help paying for medications, coming up at 5, we take a look at a couple of programs that can give you the help you need. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. We'll be right back. The latest monthly jobless report for May actually showing a drop in the unemployment rate, and it also showed an increase in hiring, that was unexpected, and it took some economists by surprise. But with all that positive news comes a warning from health officials. ABC's Rena Roy reports a possible second wave of COVID-19 could stem from those mass protests happening around the country. Surprisingly good economic news this morning with the unemployment rate now declining according to the jobs report for May put out by the Labor Department. 2.5 million jobs were added last month in industries like hospitality, construction, health services and retail, bringing the unemployment rate down to 13.3 percent from 14.7 in April. It is important to note while temporary layoffs seem to be improving, permanent layoffs continue to rise. For the past 11 weeks, where more than 42 million Americans filed unemployment claims, economists had expected the situation to worsen, but trillions of dollars were spent to support struggling workers and businesses during the pandemic, which seems to have played a role in easing the historic crisis caused by the coronavirus. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. We had the greatest economy in the history of the world. And that strength let us get through this horrible pandemic largely through. I think we're doing really well. It is important to note while temporary layoffs seem to be improving, permanent layoffs continue to rise. Meantime, as the country reopens, the CDC warns we are not out of the woods yet with COVID-19, predicting the death toll could hit 143,000 by the end of the month. Experts say especially concerning is the lack of social distancing and mask wearing at mass protests across the country. We're very concerned that our public health message isn't resonating. We continue to try to figure out how to penetrate the message uh, with different groups. Officials in many states like California and New York asking demonstrators to get tested for the virus. The Los Angeles Health Department even urging protesters to quarantine for 14 days after participating. Overall, at least 16 states plus Puerto Rico are seeing an increase in cases. In Utah, cases have doubled since early May. Contract tracers they are now linking outbreaks to Mother's Day and Memorial Day celebrations. And the CDC says this is the most significant public health challenge to face our nation in more than a century. And there is also new concern in Mexico and Brazil, where there are now record daily death tolls. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Iran has released a U.S. Navy veteran who had been detained for nearly two years. In 2018, Michael White said he was visiting his girlfriend in Iran when he was arrested and sentenced to 13 years in prison for insulting Iran's supreme leader and posting private information online. The Secretary of State Mike Pompeo praised Brian Hook, the special representative for Iran at the State Department. He and the Swiss government helped secure the release. An Iranian-American doctor who had violated U.S. sanctions on Iran was also released as part of this deal. Gonna look outside with live cam. Gonna show you 85 degrees, and then you can say goodbye to 85 degrees <laughs> because the temperature is going up.
Yeah, we're going to be looking at 90s this afternoon. That, uh, I guess, is not much of a surprise, but I think as we get into next week, it's going to be pretty jarring just how hot it is because we were going to be looking at maybe some record-setting heat. Take a look at this picture in our case at Connect. Uh, we've got a lot of good ones in today, but this is Robbie. He always takes great photos out of San Antonio. The flowers have been beautiful. You know, the rains did wonders for us, but now that rainfall is ending and a dry streak looks to be in place over the next few days, really over the next week or so. 87 in Boulevardy, 83 Canyon Lake, 85 Comfort, 89 in Devines. We're almost to 90 there. 84 in Hondo, 85 in New Valley. Most everybody is looking at mostly sunny skies. This is the forecast heat index today. This is what it's going to feel like around 5 o'clock when you factor in that humidity. Pretty rough. 98 here in San Antonio, 100 in Carrizo Springs, 101 there in Catua. And forecast for today, air temperature wise up to 93 by 4 o'clock. We'll see temperatures very slow to cool down this evening. And then again, we've got that hot weekend, but a, a very slight chance of rain. Don't want to leave that out Saturday night. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. As some states across the country begin to gradually reopen, parents face new challenges on how to readjust children's routines. As ABC's Inez De La Catera explains, Parents play a key role in helping resetting healthy daily routines. Amid the pandemic, with everyone at home, parents have had to take on multiple roles as teachers, coaches, nutritionists and entertainers, to name just a few. In light of this, the Centers for Disease Control is anticipating that the COVID-19 pandemic will have an impact on children's mental health and increase childhood obesity. As some states begin to loosen their restrictions, experts from the American Heart Association recommend that parents support their kids throughout this transition, developing healthy habits that would maximize long-term physical and mental health. AHA experts encourage parents to set small and achievable short-term goals to reprioritize nutrition, physical activity, and screen time. School-age kids and teens should get at least 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous intensity activity. When it comes to nutrition, children diets should include vegetables, fruits, nuts, whole grains, lean proteins, and fish every day, to name a few. Minimize trans fat, processed meats, refined carbohydrates, and sweetened drinks. Make eating healthy fun by cooking together and scheduling a time to eat as a family. AHA experts say as for kids' screen time, less is better and no more than one to two hours per day. This will also minimize the amount of sedentary behavior your kids engage in. Parents play a key role in their children's health. Keep these tips in mind as you and your family continue adjusting to the lifestyle changes amid the COVID-19 pandemic. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de Liquitera, ABC News. Still coming up this half hour, even though the NBA season is a go, still a lot of things to work out. Larry Mears with some details that they are working on. Coming up in sports. Pacific Islanders make up less than 0.1% of San Antonio's population, but a San Antonian is making sure that her native heritage is represented. It's part of our now streaming roundup, and it's coming up after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. How about this? A taste of live music from the comfort of your couch. A San Antonio woman wants to offer you that, sharing culture with others in our community. That's just some of the content available right now on the KSAT TV app, plus new offerings on Netflix, Hulu. Yeah, and more. Here's Sarah Costa with a roundup of some of the new content you can stream today. Some people are venturing out more and more, but if you're a homebody, there's plenty of content online to keep you entertained. Streaming now on the KSAT app, Stay at Home Jams. I woke up alone in the cold room, far away from home. Catch San Antonio musician Allison Alonzo singing her song, Champion. There's also several other performances by other artists ready to stream. I am born and raised in San Antonio. I'm an official misplaced Hawaiian. <laughs> 
And you can meet Renee Park. She is the owner and operator of Aloha Kitchen, Catering and Entertainment. Her dance group performs at just about every major San Antonio event. See how she's using the traditional hula dance to share her Hawaiian heritage with others. You can download the Quesa TV app in your app store. What if they're watching him now? What if they're watching all of us? The final season of 13 Reasons Why hits Netflix and the Fab Five are back with a new season of Queer Eye. This time around, the group is bringing their positivity and expertise to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. This is a Fab Five Confidence Emergency. An award-winning movie from this year's Sundance Film Festival debuts this weekend. Elizabeth Moss portrays author Shirley Jackson in the dramatic thriller Shirley. Shirley is struggling creatively until a young couple pays a visit. I feel like we're in the Scottish play. On the verge of madness, what will happen? What indeed as alliances are formed and betrayed. Catch it on Hulu starting today. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. So what were you saying earlier? Check out that 85 and enjoy it right now because it may not last it's long. Still it's still 85. Hey! I was, it's probably a little clouds yeah. passing over the thermostat. Well, the thing about it is if we get the hourly reading, so. <laughs> oh, okay. oh we got to wait till one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the high so far today. 76 was the low this morning, so we didn't cool down much. The averages are 91 and 71. I think we're going to jump a little bit above average today. The record is 101 set back in 1948. That's not in jeopardy today, but I do think the records will be challenged going forward. We'll talk about that seven day forecast coming up. Many local restaurants and small businesses were hit hard due to the coronavirus pandemic. However, many have started to welcome customers back. Papa's Burger, located on Old Highway 90, is a staple on the far west side and known for having some of the best burgers around. For years, owner Robert Walker has wanted to open a second location and recently got the opportunity in the middle of the pandemic. We don't want to just simply open up the door and be another burger place, which we've never really been. But we also want to actually set the bar a little bit higher so that people can say that they're, they're proud not only of the history, but of also of the, the trends and the, the new narratives that we're creating in this world that's constantly changing. The entire process to open up has been a challenge, but Walker says he has faith that all will be okay. Papa's Burgers and God We Trust will open tomorrow, 6900 block of San Pedro Avenue. For full details about the opening and what you can expect when you go to the restaurant, make sure to visit our website, kset.com. After seven years on the job, a Texas game warden canine named Ruger has officially retired from service this week. According to a Facebook post from the Texas Game Wardens page, Ruger, quote, assisted the public and law enforcement community with several narcotic seizures, article evidence recoveries, natural disaster responses, criminal tracks, and search and rescue of missing persons, end quote. No wonder he's retiring. We're told that he is set to enjoy a very relaxed retirement, hopefully somewhere cool. You need to take him to the burger place. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Well, you, you're just hungry. Yeah, that too. <laughs> That's all. I'm sure he'd enjoy some, you know, burgers. Well, you'd be happy. You'd be happy. He would. All right. Yeah, it's lunchtime. <laughs> That's why we're talking <laughs> food. Uh, you know, lately we haven't had to water our lawns much because the rainfall has been nice. It is coming to an end. So for the month of June, we're at nine hundredths of an inch. Uh, of course, we did really well in May. Uh, a little bit below average for the month, obviously. And for the year, we're at 13.27. This is at San Antonio International Airport, by the way. So this is going to vary depending on where you live. But this general idea here, we're still a little bit above average. Now, as uh, we go forward in time here over the next week, it does not look like we'll get much rain at all. And so we'll likely drop back below average. But at least we've pulled out of the drought just a little bit for now. Here's the setup. We have a ridge fire pressure, which typically keeps us pretty dry. We've got some showers rotating around it. So there were some showers and storms yesterday across parts of the Texas Panhandle. Uh, they died out before they moved any farther south towards us. Uh, but we are going to watch uh, coming up here next couple days, or at least uh, as we get into Saturday, a little disturbance that's going to roll around the ridge here. Latest computer models have developed some thunderstorms with this tomorrow afternoon around Houston and it tries to hold some of this together as it works towards San Antonio. This will be around 10 o'clock. It's possible, not likely, but we got to put it in there, especially because it's the weekend. So just keep in mind if you see a shower or storm pop up late tomorrow, 
That's why it shouldn't last very long. We're not expecting much rain out of that, and the best chance will be east of town. So the uh, live cam shows we've got the mostly sunny skies, 85 degrees right now. Dew point is at 68. Southeasterly winds at about five, and the heat index is up to 88, and that's going to continue to grow this afternoon. Uh, we had a good morning cloud deck that has uh, scattered out, and so you can expect that again tomorrow. We may start off with a little bit of cloud cover, just. Uh, won't last long, and then the sun's out during the afternoon. 84 Randolph, 83 Seguin, 87 in New Braunfels. 90 now Creaso Springs, 91 in Del Rio. A couple of the warm spots there. And the heat index, 93 now in Gonzales. You're going to see some pretty high heat indices out east because the moisture is high. And you'll see some pretty big numbers out west because the air temperature is high. And there is also a little bit of added moisture there. But this is your feels like temperature right now. Feels like 88 here in town. Let's talk about the tropics. We still got our tropical depression down there. Winds at 35 miles per hour. Looking pretty ragged. When you see a storm like this and all the convection or thunderstorm activity is not over the center, tells you it's not a very healthy storm. But as it reemerges into the Gulf of Mexico and has some warm water to, to deal with, it should start to strengthen some, likely becoming a tropical storm again. At least that's what the Hurricane Center thinks. Uh, the latest track takes it right into Louisiana. This would be Sunday night. Winds at about 60 miles per hour. It's not quite hurricane strength. That's good news. It's going to be moving pretty fast. So a lot of rainfall is not expected. Still, there will be some impacts there. And it's all east of us. It stays away from uh, South Texas. So on the back side of it, we're going to see some really hot temperatures. These are forecast highs by just one of our computer models, and I think they're a little overdone. But I show it to you just because it gives you the general idea. This is going to be some extreme heat on Tuesday. We'll get a frontal boundary through here Wednesday morning, and that does cool us down some. Uh, we're still talking hundreds here, but it dries us out some too. Uh, so that's what we have to look forward to next week. 93 degrees today, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then look for uh, 95 tomorrow, 97 on Sunday. There's an outside chance for shower Saturday night. And then triple digits, near record heat, Monday and Tuesday. We'll, we'll be right back.